Hello everyone and welcome back to the Angular University. In this lesson, we're going to learn about signal-based data services. So what are these and when they are useful? This is a pattern that you are likely going to need when building signal-based applications. This comes in handy in situations when you want to share a signal across multiple different components of your application. So in that case, defining the signal here as a member variable of only one single component, that would not solve our problem. We want a way to share a signal across different parts of our application that might not even be aware of each other. So the different consumers of that signal might not have a parent-child relationship. They might not be next to each other in some parent component template, they might be in completely different places of the component tree. So in that case, we wouldn't want to define that signal as a member variable of one of the components. What can we do instead? Well, you might be tempted to define your signal here as a global variable and just export it everywhere. So export const counter and then you can use here the signal API that is not necessarily linked to any component and create this way the signal and just export it and allow any part of the application to read it or set its value using the set or update APIs. This is a tempting solution, but I think that there is a better way that is going to make this a lot more maintainable. So I don't think that it's a very good idea to have global signal in your application. Probably this is uh, going to cause you maintenance issues in the long term. It's a bit like having a global variable in your application. It's just not a good idea. It's much better to somehow encapsulate that data that we want to change, in this case the signal value, and allow it to be changed by the application, but only in a controlled way. And the best way to achieve that is to create a data service. So let me go ahead and let me define here a new service. We are going to define here a class and we're going to call it the counter service. All right. And let's make this an Angular service by adding here the injectable decorator. And let's say that this is provided in root. All right, so we have here the skeleton of a counter service. Now, what we want to do here is to define our counter signal here in the service, but we don't want to expose this writable signal to the outside world. So let me go ahead and let me define here a new counter signal. All right, and I'm going to call here the signal API and let's initialize this with the value zero all right now this is our signal it's kept private to this class so only this class can access it and therefore only this class can call the set and update methods on this signal so that ensures that no other parts of the application can freely modify this signal without this class allowing it all right, so the next step here is to somehow expose this signal to the outside world. We want to be able to inject this counter service in uh, multiple parts of our application and access the value of the signal, right? So for that, we are going to need here a counter public signal. And this is going to be derived here from the counter signal using the as read only API. And we want to make this property read only. We don't want other parts of the application to modify this public counter read only signal. All right. Now, how does this work? Because this is private, we need to expose here some sort of public API to this service to allow any other interested parties in the application to modify the signal, but in a controlled way. So let's go ahead and let's add here a public increment method. And then in this public increment method, we can access the counter signal and we can update it. So let's grab its value and let's increment it by one. So what is the advantage of doing things this way? 
The advantage is that the counter signal cannot be accessed by other parts of the application. So in the future, if we want to detect all parts of the application that are incrementing the counter, all we have to do is use our IDE and find the usages of this function here. And we will find all the parts of the application that are incrementing the signal. If we want to add here some sort of validation rule that prevents the counter value from being larger than 10, we can do that here and that will be enforced in every single part of the application that is calling the increment function. So we don't have to repeat that validation logic everywhere in the application. So let's just add here, for example, some validation logic. If the counter value is larger than 10, then we are going to throw here a new error and we're going to say maximum value reached. All right. So this is just an example of the type of validation that you can add here in these methods that you are exposing as part of the API of the counter service. You can add here any rules and you guard, you keep the control over how the value of the signal is getting mutated. All right. So then how can we then give access to the signal to other parts of the application? Let's go back here to our application component. And here in the constructor, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to inject here the counter service. We do this via typical constructor based injection. Let's define here the type counter service and let's go back here to the application component. And with this, we have injected the counter service here. So now we are ready to use it. So instead of using here this counter, we are now going to be using the counter service. Let's access the counter service and let's access the counter public signal. So remember, we cannot call here set or update. So the application component can't just change the value of the counter service signal directly. If we want to do so, then we need to do it via the public API of the service. In this case, we need to call the increment method and the validation rule is going to be enforced everywhere where this call is being made in the application. So you can see it's much better this way than to use a global variable. Let's then go ahead and let's try this out and we can see that the property counter does not exist on the application component. So this is an error here in the template. Let's then go ahead and let's make this public so that we can access it on the template directly. All right, let's go ahead and let's call here the counter service and we're going to call here the counter signal. All right, we could also assign this to a signal based member variable. But here, just to keep the example simple, I'm going to do it this way. So now let's go ahead and let's increment here the signal. And as you can see, everything is working correctly as expected. So to summarize the benefits of using this signal based data service is that we are creating a private signal and we are encapsulating it inside a service. The service has a public API. It allows us to change the data in a controlled way. It allows us to keep our code base maintainable. If you want to find everywhere where this is being done, the increment, you just have to find the usages of this method. In the case of this application, there is only one usage. So this helps keep our signal code nice and maintainable. Just one more thing to bear in mind is that this pattern where you wrap a signal in a service, this is really only necessary when you are in a situation where you have a signal that you want to share across multiple components of your application. And those components are typically completely unrelated. They have no direct connection with each other. In that situation, it makes sense to wrap your signal in a shared service. Other than that, the most frequent way of using signals is as member variables of a component. And with this, we have wrapped our coverage on signals. Let's then continue with the rest of the course.